Shalom. My name is Hadas Malada Matsri. I serve in the Israeli Air Force as a medical officer. <laughs> Thank you. I am 27 years old, married to Jonathan, and we have a sweet daughter named Tamar, and she just turned two, uh, she just turned one year two weeks ago. <laughs> yes, she is amazing. <laughs> I really miss her. I'm very excited to be here today, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my story with you. Um, and thanks to the Jewish Federation for supporting my community and supporting organizations like uh, the ENP, the Ethiopian National Project, um, that are helping to create a better future for my community. I made the journey to Israel with my family in 1988 in a small operation led by my father and his brother as part of uh, uh, what is called Moses, uh, Operation Moses. And before leaving Ethiopia, we were living in a small village uh, near Gonder called Mereva. One night, my father suddenly woke us up and told us that we need to run and be quiet. We didn't know where we are going and why we are leaving our home at, at midnight. I was three then and have more, uh, five more siblings. We took a little food and clothing and started to walk in the darkness. We walked for almost six weeks, hiding from soldiers and robbers during the day and moving only at night time. We had a different guide showing us the way for each part in our path. He always walked a few meters in front of us to check if the area is clear. One night, the, one night, the guide heard footsteps. He told us to, be, to hide and be quiet. But then one of the babies started to cry, and his mother, and his mother tried to, uh, to silence him, but he didn't stop. So the Sudanese soldier caught us and, and took us to a refugee camp in, uh, uh, in Sudan. They asked us who we are and where we are going and if we are Jewish. My father stood up and, told, and tried to tell them that we are only escaping from the hunger in Ethiopia, but they didn't believe us. In the refugee camp, they separated the women and the children from the men. They took the men to work in camps and uh, put my father in prison since he was cooperating with the Israeli Mossad. Life in the refugee camp were very difficult and every day was a, was a, a struggle for, for survival. Every day the Sudanese soldier divided a liter, liter water for each person and a, a glass of flour for each couple. We mixed the flour with the, with the um, water and made a dough. And if we were lucky and we had a fire, so uh, we make a bread and eat. Many in the camp, in the camp suffer from uh, malnutrition and died from hunger and disease. I myself had malaria, uh, measles, measles, and uh, another skin disease that uh, caused to total body hair loss. I was very tired and weak, and uh, I started to be confused and uh, hallucinated. My mother didn't believe that I'm going to survive. After 10 months, my father was finally released from, the, uh, from prison, and shortly after that, we were rescued in the, in, from the refugee camp by an American-Israeli operation and brought to Israel by plane. When we arrived to the airport in Israel, a doctor examined me and decided to send me immediately to Soroka Hospital in Beersheba in South Israel. I spent in the hospital almost six months till totally recovered and started to gain weight and, uh, and eat. During this period, my mother told me that I was very curious and interested in the uh, medical team actions and asked so many questions, even though I didn't know the language. And in the last day, I told my mother, uh, when, I, when, I, when I'll get grow up, I wanna be like those people that wearing white coats. And my mother told me, and my mother answered me and said, 
I believe that God saved you so you could help others. And here I am today wearing the same coat. Well, in my case, beige, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> trying to help others. Thank you very much. When we arrived to Israel, my family was sent to uh, an absorption center in a small town of Arad. My parents now faced a new reality, challenging reality. They had a very simple, calm village life in Ethiopia. My father studied only till the age of 17, and my mother never went to school, and she got married to my father when she was only 12 years. Uh, so now they had to learn everything from the beginning, how to use the toilet or the stove, and how to go to the bank and pay the bills, and uh, of course everything in a new language that they had to learn very fast. This new reality created a very significant ch changes for the, for the Ethiopian community. In Ethiopia, the father was the pillar of the house, and he was a role model for the children and respect to the elderly was a very, very important value. Here in Israel, the children adjusted very fast to the new, uh, to the new reality. They learned the culture and the language very fast, and the parents left behind in the new reality. And they become dependent on their children for the most simple daily tasks. This created a very fragile, situa fragile situation inside the families, resulting in a lack of respect to parents and lack, and lack of uh, uh, guidance and uh, role model for the children. In my case, it was different. My parents, even though they don't have any formal education, were quick to understand that the, most, the, the key to success in Israel is uh, education. They encouraged us to study hard and uh, integrate in society, and they gave us all the emotional and mental support we needed. The only aspect in which my parents could never support me was the financial aspect. This brought me to the decision to join the Atidim Academic Reserve Program, where they take um, excellent students from uh, periphery and helping them achieve uh, a high education by supporting them financially. Program participants are given back by serving uh, six years in the army in their profession instead of uh, two or three years, uh, which is the normal uh, 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 mandatory service. Another organization who supported me during the medical school was the ENP, the Ethiopian National Project, who gave me a scholarship and does amazing work with teenagers, parents, and leaders. During my studies, I tried to make it a point to give back in the best way that I can. I volunteer in the Israeli ambulance services. I initiated a sexual awareness uh, program at Mevaseret Zion Absorption Center. I played with abandoned Bedouin children who were hospitalized at uh, Soroka Hospital. I tutored a five years old uh, girl whose mother suffered from schizophrenia. I volunteer in the Israel AIDS Task Force and also volunteer in an orphan in a hospital in Ethiopia. I understood very fast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I understood very fast that many children and teenagers in my community look up to me as a role model. Understanding that, I started giving lectures in elementary schools and high schools with high concentration of Ethiopian students, sharing with them my, sharing with them my, story, my personal story and giving them a quick view into the world of medicine. At the beginning of the lecture, I always ask the children, what is their dream for the future? Sadly, a lot of them tell me, a lot of them say that they don't have a dream. But then, at the end of the lecture, I see the different, the different look in their eyes, 
and they say to me that now they believe that they can achieve higher education and they dare to dream further. My hopes and dreams My hopes and dreams for the future are to do residency in uh, pediatric medicine. And uh, <laughs> thank you. And deal with global health issues related to children. Uh, keep working with my community, with young people in my community, and uh, encourage them to dream and achieve high education. And I also hope to complete my Amharic, Hebrew, and English medical dictionary that I'm, that I'm now working on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I want to conclude with a short story. Just the other day, I was walking on a campus of Ben Gurion University. And <laughs> not yet. <laughs> and I heard shouting. I turned around and saw two girls running toward me. Much to my surprise, they hugged me and said, you are the doctor, you probably don't remember us, but six years ago, you spoke in our school and told us your story. Today we are in a preparatory program and hope, to, and hope next year to be accepted to medical school. You are the one who inspired us and made us believe that we can succeed. I feel so proud that I was able to help those, these two girls in my own way. And I'm grateful for the unending support of the different organizations that made it possible for me to stand here today. No doubt they and you will make it possible for many other people in my community stand before you in years to come. Right now, I look out at the audience and I see 1,500 dreamers, each of whom can make a change in the lives of many, or even in the life of one. If each of us does our best to make a difference in our own special way, I believe we can turn dreams to reality. Thank you very much. <laughs>